Um, so hello everyone and um, welcome to our session, How Wiki Education Pursues Knowledge Equity. There are five of us here talking today, so you will get a um, introduction from a number of us. I wanna start by doing introductions, so I will introduce myself and then we can go down the line here of my colleagues. So my name is Leanna Davis. I am the Chief Programs Officer for Wiki Education. Thank you. Um, which is the nonprofit that runs the education program here in the United States and Canada. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry. I will talk about that in a little bit. Ian. I'm Ian Ramjohn. I'm the uh, <laughs> senior <laughs> Wikipedia expert at Wiki Education, and I work as part of the whole project, uh, supporting primarily students and instructors. Hello, hello, my name is Brianda Felix. I am the other Wikipedia expert, also supporting instructors and students. Hi everybody, my name is Will Kent. I am the Scholars and Scientists Program Manager, one of two programs at uh, Wiki Education Runs. And I'm Colleen McCoy. I'm the Communications and Outreach Coordinator, so I get to do a lot of our storytelling and share the experiences of our program participants and students. Hey, thank you all. Um, so for those of you, I know I see some familiar faces in here who this, you could probably give this presentation. Um, but for those of you who are new to the movement, new to Wiki Education, want to learn a little bit about us. Um, so we are a movement partner organization, which means we are not technically an affiliate of the Wikimedia Foundation, but we do a lot of work um, directly tied to the movement. And so we are part of the community um, just without technically being an affiliate. Um, we were formed in 2014, although the work that our program um, has been, our core uh, program has been doing it, we've been running it since 2010. Um, and we engage in programs broadly to connect, connect academia and subject matter experts to the Wikimedia projects. And we'll talk a little bit more about what those programs particularly mean. Um, but the two core programs that we have are the Wikipedia Student Program, where the students edit Wikipedia as part of the coursework. Those of you who are just in Brianda's great panel, I've heard from a couple of our wonderful instructors um, about that. And our Wiki Scholars and Scientists Program, which Will will also talk about later in the program, too. Um, there, we have 12 staff. Um, this is a picture of all of us, um, plus Frank and Danielle, who Danielle joined after, and Frank was unfortunately sick. Um, but this is um, the crew. There's five of us here today um, from Wiki Education who are, um, are present at this conference, but um, we are representing a broader organization. Um, and one of the things that I think is important to emphasize is that we all deeply care about Wikipedia. So some of us come from an academic background. Some of us come from a Wikipedia background. Many of us come from a background involving both. Um, and this is something that you will see as a through line through our programs is we're not just there to make academics um, engage with Wikipedia. We're there to make Wikipedia better by empowering academics and subject matter experts to contribute. And so Wikipedia is that sort of North Star for us. Um, and this talk today is about our work on knowledge equity. And so one of the things I've learned, I have been immersed in the movement strategy process for many, many years now, but I know not everyone in the community is as well versed in movement strategy as I am. And um, so I'm quoting here from Meta on the movement, the strategic direction, which talks about a definition of knowledge equity, which was sent as one of the two um, strategic priorities that we are working toward together as a movement and knowledge equity de was defined as knowledge in communities that have le been left out by structures of power and privilege. Um, and so I want to talk about specifically how we work on that as an organization at Wiki Education. So there's those two elements, there's the knowledge and there's the communities. And so in knowledge, the broad work that we do is to create and expand biographies of underrepresented people. So this is women, this is people of color, this is anyone who has been sort of historically marginalized in our society. We add historically marginalized perspectives to Wikipedia articles across a wide range of topics. And we'll give a couple examples of this later in the presentation, but this is making sure we are ensuring that there are, um, I apologize for anyone who couldn't see the application before, um, <laughs> the making sure we are including perspectives um, that were not previously included in Wikipedia articles that tell a fuller picture of narratives. And then 
Uh, one of the major questions we often get is how are we funded? We do receive funding from the Wikimedia Foundation, but we also uniquely to a lot of organizations in the Wikimedia universe, we do a substantial amount of external funding seeking funding from foundations. And so a couple of the foundations that are currently funding us to work on projects related to knowledge equity include the Broadcom Foundation, who has funded us to work on biographies of diverse people in STEM, and the WITH Foundation, which works on improve, funds us to improve information related to disability health care, and the Mellon Foundation, which is one of our major funders who funds us in an initiative specifically tied to knowledge equity, social justice, and the humanities. And then we talk about the communities aspect as well from that strategic direction. So our primary work is in the United States. We do some work in Canada. We have a handful of universities that we support in Canada, but overwhelmingly the vast majority of universities we work with are in the United States. And the existing community here is not very diverse, um, either in gender or race and ethnicity. And so I wanna talk a little bit about what this looks like from the Community Insight Survey for those of you who are not familiar. The Community Insight Survey is a survey that Wikimedia Foundation does. Um, regularly, and it includes demographic information, and it is split out by region. And so I'm going to just focus on the North America region here today, or the U.S. and Canada region um, for the demographics. Um, in terms of the gender gap, in the existing community of Wikipedia editors, there is 22% women in the North American region, versus the programs that Wiki Education runs uh, have a gender representation of 70% women, non-binary or other gender identities. And so we are able to bring in a much more sort of diverse population of editors um, gender wise. And then when we talk about race and ethnicity, you may be familiar with this chart. This chart is from um, the Wikimedia Foundation's Community um, Insight Survey, and it looks at the underrepresentation of um, this is particularly in the United States itself among black and Hispanic people. And the headline that they have here is, as in 2020, black and Hispanic people continue to be underrepresented among U.S. editors. You can see the blue line is the active, U.S. active editors. The yellow line is the U.S. population for each of these. Yeah. Native people are also underrepresented. I spoke with the communities or the wrong statistic for Native people. In ah, okay. All right. Well, um, I'm pulling from uh, from the, the last data, but yes, I would imagine they are also underrepresented. I want to show you a version of this chart that includes the demographics from um, Wiki Education's own program participants. So this is the same chart with a green line added that shows the, um, the racial or ethnicity breakdown of the participants that we work with in our programs. So you see we have much greater parity um, among the um, traditionally underrepresented populations on English Wikipedia. And so by bringing in a population of more diverse editors through both of our programs, we are able to work to help close those sort of knowledge gaps around knowledge equity in the communities. Uh, any questions on this? Okay. Brianda. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'll be talking about uh, what measures we're taking to tackle knowledge equity in our student program. Um, so since 2022, so I guess Wiki Education has been doing this, right? Knowledge equity has been a focus since its founding. But since 2022, we've taken a more targeted approach, right? With, uh, with the creation of the equity outreach coordinator role. And Andres Vera is in that role currently, right? And he has been charged with um, doing outreach to diverse institutions like historically black colleges, Hispanic serving institutions, and tribal colleges and universities, right? right. Um, and along those lines, also been tasked with uh, doing outreach to instructors that are teaching in content, content areas related to knowledge equity, right? And so, so far we've seen, um, so this is our an increase in the diverse contributors, right? In the spring 2024 term, we had 51% of students uh, identifying as female, 7.91% uh, identifying as non-binary, and 46% identifying as non-white. Right. Um, and we've also seen an increase in uh, new courses, right, in areas related to knowledge equity, a 24% increase. We've also seen 
a 43% increase in new classes from these diverse institutions, right? So obviously we would love these numbers to be bigger, right? But it's a work in progress. And this is uh, what we've been able to measure so far. Okay? Um, another how, right? In our own work with our instructors, we've uh, included intentional guidance, right? Um, to direct instructors and students to edit through a knowledge equity lens, right? Um, so one of these ways is in guiding instructors to uh, cite diverse authors, um, right, in our materials. And my colleague, Colleen, will go over this in more depth, right? But, um, you know, diversifying where we're getting our information, right, and the kind of sources we're using uh, when adding information to Wikipedia. Um, our students also typically are focused on addressing content gaps in existing articles, right? This is one example. One of our students uh, added a section on contraception during the Great Depression, right? Who, right? Who would have thought of that until they, I think she was part of uh, the History of Sexuality, a, a course from Utah State University, right? And did a fantastic job. Um, here's another example from Brown University a course uh, titled Environmental Injustice and Justice in African History. Our student added an environmental record of the Firestone Natural Rubber Company um, in Liberia, right? So what was their impact in that country? Um, and so in addition um, to our intentional guidance, we also offer, offer office hours for instructors and students. This is a little screenshot of what it's like on Zoom. Um, and hold, we hold these weekly on Fridays, right? And it's just a chance for them to talk to us directly, um, you know, just about questions about the community and questions about the project and hopefully make sure that we are guiding them and that they're on track to have a successful, right, project um, with us. So in addition to these, we also hold like quarterly workshops where we talk about a specific part of the project, right? Um, it might be like creating you know, what's like creating a bibliography, um, tips for choosing the right article, um, you know, uh, looking at a draft, what is a, what is a good uh, contribution look like, uh, right? Getting it ready for main space and stuff like that. Um, and so a couple, diving into some specific projects, right? Leanna mentioned earlier on, we have been, we have received funding to support specific work in knowledge equity Right, one of these projects that started in January 2024 is from the Mellon Foundation, right? And they, we've been tasked with um, recruiting students and instructors to increase, right, knowledge equity in the humanities. And this is a three-year project. And those, uh, that stat that you see up there, right? That's so far what we've been able to accomplish with our students and our instructors. So far, we've had 254 courses that, are, that have added uh, content related to knowledge equity, uh, around three, almost 4,000 students. Fantastic. So, and we're almost done through 2024, but we have two more years to go. So that's with the Mellon Foundation. And then we are currently wrapping up a project uh, with the Broadcom Foundation. It's a two-year project where we were um, tasked with creating biographies of underrepresented people in STEM. Um, and so these are the stats of our courses so far, right? 35 courses. We had 583 students. Uh, we've created 86 articles so far, and these include a range of um, diverse people, right, and diverse identities that weren't on Wikipedia before these students uh, created them. So this has been a good project, and we're going to be wrapping up soon. We have a couple instructors that participated, Laurel and LT. Um, and so it's been a good, it's been a good, uh, good ride. All right. And I have some, just some more stats on this Broadcom Foundation project since we've been close to finishing it up, right? Uh, we had a lot of students or several work on the biographies of African Americans in the Manhattan Project, right? Scientists that participated, but didn't get their, right, due recognition. Um, and so... Here is a graph, I think, that gives a good visual of the impact our students had uh, through this project, right? Uh, if we look at the first graph, you see uh, the number of articles that were created in this, in this group of uh, articles, right? Dark, 
purple are Wikipedia editors, right? The light purple are, are our students. So you could see when we started the Broadcom project, right? In that, sh that upshot, right? In article creations. Um, so this just gives you an idea of what, right? The impact can be when it's, when it's focused and when we have direction, uh, right? Um, and what we can accomplish with the proper funding in this content area. Um, and here we have some, some quotes from our students, because that's always great, right? Getting the firsthand account from their experience. I'll read off the top one. Uh, this is from our student, Felicia. She says, as a black woman in a male-dominated career, I know how disheartening it can be to be overlooked or even disrespected because of race, gender, social status, or other characteristics that are not considered mainstream, said Casey Hicks, a media professional with over 35 years of experience. I think it's important to recognize innovation and for people to see someone to whom they can relate, doing something they didn't know was possible. That was from North, uh, North Carolina Central University. And then here we have um, a couple of quotes from our students at Clovis Community College in California, right? Um, let's see. I'll, do the, I'll, I'll read the middle one. Y'all can read the other ones. Uh, being able to provide more information to the public on what I may be researching in the future and supporting Wikipedia's journey to make a more equitable encyclopedia has been a great honor, right? So this, this project, um, right, uh, we talk about engaging our youth. Um, and so this, is, this provides you some insight of what they're thinking, right, when they are participating and contributing content to Wikipedia. And I'll pass it on to my colleague, Will. Thanks, Brianda. I hate following Brianda because it's always so impressive. Um, so I'm going to tell you about the Scholars and Scientists program, which is the program that I run. It's very different than the student program in that it's very, very small. Uh, and so our numbers aren't as impressive. But that allows us to do some really focused work. Um, so what the Scholars and Scientists program is, the goal uh, is to train subject area experts to improve Wikipedia in their areas of expertise. And I want to emphasize that experts can be defined very broadly. It can be people with lived experience, people from a certain community, people who have published for decades uh, in an academic sense um, on a specific topic. Uh, but the idea is to, to identify these people and, and train them to edit Wikipedia. Um, the idea behind that is uh, familiarity with complex topics uh, allows for easier, higher quality edits. Um, it's easier to identify content gaps, easier to approach uh, complex topics at times. Um, and typically, uh, people from these communities are uh, more knowledgeable about important sources that might be missing. So it should be a different kind of editing process. Um, I just said that, cool. anticipating my own bullet points. Uh, more about the Scholars and Scientists program. Um, we have a Wikidata branch. For those of you uh, who are less familiar with Wikidata, um, I work a lot with librarians and museum experts. Uh, how to edit Wikidata, which is a different beast than Wikipedia altogether. altogether. Um, equity is a concern uh, for all of the institutions that participate uh, in the Wikidata courses that I lead. Um, and the data that they bring to Wikidata is often uh, missing outright. So uh, every time that they are able to add more to Wikidata, that helps uh, with equity concerns uh, on like a batch editing level, which is really important. Uh, and maintenance queries from Wikidata uh, allow us to better understand gaps on Wikipedia. Um, a lot of uh, wiki projects on Wikipedia use Wikidata queries and tables to understand what's there versus what's not. So we're kind of helping each other across wiki platforms, which I think is a very significant element of this program. Um, I do have a case study for you that I want to share. Um, and this one is exclusively on Wikipedia. Uh, and it's from the WIF Foundation, which uh, my colleague uh, Liana mentioned earlier. Uh, they support. Um, People with disabilities, communities with disabilities, um, they uh, promote the establishment of comprehensive health care for adults with developmental disabilities. It's their, their motto. Um, and we ran five courses uh, to improve articles in that subject area over the past year or so. Um, and in addition to the contributions, we recruited participants with lived disability experience to work on these articles. And that, again, is broadly defined. Um, people who live with people with disabilities, people who support in any way, shape, or form, who have knowledge of the community in some way through work or other areas of life. Um, just quantifying some impact in storytelling. Uh, it was, again, a small program. We worked with just under 50 people, uh, added under 10,000 words. Um, our reviews were over a million. 
Um, and this, uh, this is a picture of Heather who did a lot of uh, coursework with us. I think she took the course three times because she's so passionate about this and um, just has a lot, a lot to share. Um, and I think it's essential to have people who represent the communities you work with actually edit in that area. Um, they bring perspective that others cannot. Um, and so we also like to feature the participants uh, and blog posts and I like their work because this is just a great way to give them a platform. Uh, this is an example from the Wiki Education Dashboard. I'm sure some of you have seen this before, but everything in purple uh, was missing uh, from the Down Syndrome article previous to one of these courses. You would think that something this significant uh, as part of this article would already be there. It wasn't. Uh, someone added it. So this is like a, a really clear example of what this program does so efficiently. Uh, people see that these things are missing. They know where to go for the sources, and then they can add it to Wikipedia thanks to the, the training that we provide them and also just their inherent talent. So I'm really proud of this, this particular addition to the Down Syndrome article. Um, but that said, there's a lot more to do. Uh, with is just one example of a partner that we work with. Um, addressing equity or knowledge equity uh, is a long process, uh, and it, it's, it's complicated and takes time. Um, but we've also run courses uh, focused on the LGBTQIA plus communities, uh, rare diseases, Latinx community, black history, women in politics, among many others. Um, and I think this program has proven that it is effective uh, at improving complicated topic areas and also drawing subject area experts to these areas who wouldn't otherwise be editing Wikipedia, which I think is very significant. Um, so thank you. That's my part. And I will pass it on to Colleen. Thanks, Well, So you've heard about two programs um, in our organization. And of course, in order to support these subject matter experts in the um, program that we'll just discuss, as well as our students and instructors in our student program, we're always looking to enhance our uh, curricular materials and training modules to ensure a really positive and productive experience for everyone who comes through our program. So just today, I want to give you an idea of one of our new training modules called Improving Representation on Wikipedia, which is intended to do just that. So, of course, we have goals for all of our training modules for this one in particular. Um, we thought of it as kind of trifold. So, of course, training modules serve to educate, right, whoever is taking them. And when it comes to especially our students, they may be coming into the program um, with a really kind of surface level uh, idea of what the information landscape is on Wikipedia and the rest of the world as well, academic publishing, the media, what they see in the news. And so laying that foundation to kind of get everybody on the same page uh, in terms of what the information landscape looks like. And of course, we want to motivate. And so beyond just that education piece, we really want them to tackle this head on and, and feel really motivated and understanding why this work to improve knowledge equity, to improve representation on Wikipedia is so important. It's a really critical topic and we want to feel, we want them to feel like they're ready um, to go after it. And then lastly, with the right tools, the right examples, and some really practical tips for doing this kind of work, we wanted to empower them, right? Our program participants, our students, often come in a little bit intimidated. We heard from um, Bree's panel earlier that some of the students are a little nervous, no matter what their age is, in getting onto Wikipedia and making these kinds of edits, particularly in the space of improving representation, topics of social justice and knowledge equity. And so we wanted to make sure they were empowered to be really successful uh, in moving through this process. Okay, so just to give you an idea, kind of the framework, this is the first slide of the training module. We're not going to go through the whole thing, don't worry. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of how we laid out the module for everyone. So this idea, that education piece, that Wikipedia should provide access to all knowledge, everything and everyone, everywhere, right? That's the ideal. But just like the real world, Wikipedia can fall short especially when it comes to these marginalized communities, subjects, groups, and people, um, and the representation of them on the encyclopedia. And so we're making that connection to the world they already know as they enter the world of Wikipedia as editors. We want to motivate them with this idea that even the smallest edit can make a huge difference for how we as readers understand a topic. That's massive. Even a handful of words can change the way um, that, that we understand what we're reading about these different communities, subjects, and people. And then, of course, we wanted to underscore not only the impact they can have, that motivational piece, 
but also be upfront about the kind of challenges they may face as they enter this space on Wikipedia and doing this kind of research. And lastly, of course, we're considering why and exactly how we can improve representation um, through the assignment or through our, our other programming. Okay, so equity and Wikipedia, both words students obviously have heard coming into the program, but maybe haven't made that direct link or connected the threads there. So that empowerment piece, again, as a Wikipedian, you have the power to enhance knowledge equity by including those perspectives, those marginalized perspectives missing from that dominant narrative, right? And that happens in society the way it happens on, on Wikipedia. We know there's a reflective piece there. So laying that foundation and making those connections for the students and explaining exactly what the harm is in content gaps. So they may not logically know when they get online, they see that there's missing information, but Underscoring to them what that harm can be, I think, uh, is a really important piece of laying the foundation for their work in this space. So this idea that even unintentionally, um, it can be really harmful when there's too much weight on some subjects and maybe a little or nothing at all on others. And so giving that idea of what it leads to, misinformation, that's a word we talk about a lot, right? It leads to misinformation, this idea that we bring our preconceived um, biases, our experiences, everything that makes up who we are, and we may end up filling in those gaps with our own assumptions that could lead to falsehood. So the harm in that and really explaining that to the students. So we empower them and we um, propel them to look beyond the surface of not just the idea of adding a lot of text to an article. I think a lot of students come into the program thinking, okay, I know what an article looks like, it's a series of paragraphs. We're going to add a lot of text here, but we encourage them to approach improving representation in other ways as well. There's a lot of ways you can do this on the encyclopedia. So the idea of even linking to other Wikipedia articles, that's just a very small thing you can do that can make a huge impact in shedding light and bringing more readership to some of these other articles. Who are you citing? Bree mentioned this earlier. And so no matter what course you're taking, even if you're in, say, a course that on surface value has nothing to do with social justice, no matter what, you can be a part of this movement of knowledge equity and improving representation by checking out the sources of the Wikipedia page and the Wikipedia article and considering who you're citing. So um, looking for diversity and bringing that diversity and the authorship on the article itself. So no matter what, you could be in a marine biology course and you can be adding representation to Wikipedia. We encourage them not to forget about images. Again, I think a lot of people come in thinking it's all about the text, but the images are critically important. So asking students who is depicted, how are they depicted, giving examples of what this can look like and how we can improve it, and even things as minor, right, but actually major as captions for images. So instead of say, um, saying an indigenous group in Guatemala, we actually call them to be very specific, and identify that group. So instead of that, you're saying the Cachical Maya group in Solola, Guatemala. So drilling down as much as you can and really adding that representation in that way. And reminding them, as we hear all the time, um, quality over quantity. It is not about word count just a handful of words can make a huge difference. And that's really important in this space. Okay, so as students are taking action, we wanna make sure that we're reminding and emphasizing that notability threshold. And that's something that the training module, this new module does. Um, we do it throughout all of our curriculum, all of our trainings, but particularly in this space, students often can get really excited and say, oh, I know this person is amazing. We need to add them, let's do it. And so making sure that they're meeting those notability requirements by digging deeper with their sources. So instead of just checking out what the first page of their Google search pops up, as some of us tend to do, um, we're encouraging them to look beyond the first page of Google and ask for help. So oftentimes we hear in our program that that's the first time students go into the library. You'll hear us mention that a time or two. And it's because we're encouraging them to get in there and maybe the sources they need to add a diverse figure to Wikipedia or a diverse topic or flesh out an article is actually 
a hard copy, not a digital source. And this is who, right? So, <laughs> so we send them to the librarians. We send them into the archives. We encourage them to look at local newspapers, really go beyond the surface level on that. And of course, neutral writing. Another thing we talk about quite a lot and emphasize in our training and programs, but this is so critical. I think when it comes to the topics we're so passionate about, oftentimes those social justice topics that we know are so critically important, students can become extremely impassioned and sometimes this can trickle out in the way that they write. Um, very understandable, but when it comes to making sure they have a productive and positive experience on Wikipedia, we want to emphasize that neutral writing to make sure that they can have a lasting impact. So the training module provides specific examples of neutral and not neutral um, language when it comes to this area. And their lasting impact, letting them know, sure, in a few your years, your sentences may not be exactly the same and that's okay, that's part of the process is bringing more eyes, more attention, more editors into these spaces that need improvement, correction in some cases, and just overall enhancement. Of course, we have other curricular resources I just wanted to quickly share with you related to the space of knowledge equity and improving uh, representation on Wikipedia. Uh, we got great feedback from our discussion prompts we offer to faculty to use in their classroom to actually have those conversations uh, in a kind of seminar environment. And so things like questions like, if anyone can edit Wikipedia, does it matter who does edit Wikipedia? That question alone, I see LC nodding, that could be a whole class of discussion, right? And so making sure faculty have the resources to have these critical conversations. We also provide subject specific handouts. So here we can see a women's studies handout, biographies, LGBTQ plus studies handout. So making sure that faculty feel supported to incorporate this assignment into the context of their specific discipline can be a really powerful thing and impactful thing. And I want to encourage you to engage with us through our public programming that falls into this space of knowledge equity and representation. We offer a monthly speaker series on Zoom. It's a lot of fun. We bring in panelists from all over, previous program participants, subject matter experts, students, faculty, you name it, we've got it. So when it comes to what we've done recently, I just have up here on the board a few of our specific um, representation themed events we've done. Uh, we have Wikipedia and social justice, how students are enhancing representation and equity. We did tackling Wikipedia's gender gap in March. And over the summer, we had who is preserving LGBTQ plus history. And so all of these and many more are available as recordings on our website. And I also encourage you to get online, um, wikiedu.org forward slash speaker dash series to check out our upcoming programs. We'd love to see you on Zoom and you can find all of the registration on that page. Okay. <laughs> I will turn it over to Ian, thank you. Well, you can definitely see that Colleen has a lot more uh, slide design training than I do. Um, so one of the things that came through with the Mellon Foundation is the idea that we should really have, we should really establish an, an advisory committee to help us um, connect more with what's going on in academia, what people are thinking, um, you know, personally, it felt like a terrible insult because, wait, don't I know everything that there is to know <laughs> as a good Wikipedian? Um, but we, we've got, a, a we've put together, my colleague Helene has put together a remarkable committee of, um, in the first set, these are experienced uh, faculty who have worked with our programs and who also can uh, help us a lot into, uh, into understanding what's going on in academia, how things are changing. We've got huge changes going on in the, that are still unfolding in the, you know, the learning deficits of uh, remote schooling and all that during the pandemic. And we asked these people to participate in outreach. So run Teach with Wikipedia seminars on their campus, um, participate in some of our our webinars and so on. We also 
ask them to present at conferences. And in this, so far in the 24, 25 year, they've uh, submitted to 13 conferences. I think two have happened already. And it's really a, a way to, to connect with more academics, connect with disciplines, because that's one of the ways we found very successful in terms of involving more people in, in Wikipedia. Because, you know, if their discipline says this is important, they're, they're getting more of a sense of, of how to, um, well, more of a sense of benefit on, um, to them. And the final thing is participating in the creation of a curricular guide. And this is a much more detailed guide for instructors in terms of how to teach with Wikipedia, how to design these courses, how to design these courses to um, have a much bigger impact in terms of equity, knowledge equity, and also just, uh, you know, these are the best practices. This is their experience as instructors. How can we funnel that back to, to, the, to their colleagues directly rather than having it based on, you know, well, this person told me this in feedback, so maybe some instructors need this. So this has been a really, uh, so far it's been a really great start. It runs for the three years of the grant and I'm hoping for great things from this. Linked with this is, uh, um, with all of this is the idea of uh, having more academic publishing about teaching with Wikipedia, about involving uh, social justice in Wikipedia teaching. These are a few articles in the last few years from people who are involved in our programs who have published based on their experience with our classes. Um, one of the things that one really interesting article to me is this one on in the uh, in this corner here uh, from Nicole Lugosi and colleagues about theorizing and implementing meaningful indigenization because indigenous content, indigenous ideas, indigenous knowledge as a whole is something that still has a long way to go on Wikipedia and still is a little bit at odds sometimes with the with our uh, what is the word logocentric, bad better used, our our view of the most important stuff is what's written in an academic book. Um, and part of this project as well is to expand this to get faculty involved with publications and to kind of support them in that in that process. Um, you know, we have a wealth of knowledge about Wikipedia. Now, how can we work with you to make the process a little easier in terms of those parts? Hey, I will wrap up and, and say knowledge equity doesn't end with the work that we've already done. We are continuing to make this a focus of our organizational efforts here. Um, we will continue to focus on bringing the diverse content and contributors that I talked about in the earlier slides. Um, and we will continue providing the appropriate support for these participants, um, as my colleagues have shared of uh, the different support mechanisms that we do to make sure that the content coming in is high quality, meets Wikipedia's rules, and is still something that is a motivating experience for the participants in both of our programs. Um, if you're interested in learning more about our work, knowledge equity is a theme that runs through everything we do, but we do a lot of other things in our organization as well. So we have a few other sessions at the conference that I'm going to plug. Um, you missed Brianda's earlier session, um, but we still have a few more. So today, um, Brianda and Ian have the an evolving model of the Wikipedia student assignment. And so if you're interested in learning sort of how our guidance to students and what we've changed over time, what that looks like from the actual perspective of what we're having students do, I encourage you to attend that. Um, tomorrow, Will will be talking about addressing content gaps at scale through the um, project that he runs, the Scholars and Scientists program that he talked about. 
And then Ian and I will do a how to be a dashboard super user. So um, one of the some of you may have used the program and events dashboard um, in the past. That is another thing our organization does is um, it serves as the developer um, and maintainer for that software. So um, Ian and I use it on a daily basis and um, know all kinds of tips and tricks uh, for the dashboard. So I strongly encourage you, even if you consider yourself a dashboard power user, I bet I can show you something you don't know at this session tomorrow. So that'll be a little plug to get you guys to come. Um, and then Sunday, I will be doing a panel um, with a few others on generative AI and Wikipedia, which is obviously a topic we have thought a lot about as academics, as people who work with students. Um, as people who have seen generative AI um, and its usage from the beginning. So I'll be moderating a session with um, Mariana, the keynote speaker this morning um, from the foundation, and then um, Andrew Lee, and then Bob Cummings, who is talking right now as we speak about the Wikipedia chat GPT plugin, but I wish I was there to hear, but I am here presenting to you instead. So thank you for coming to this instead of that. Um, and with that, I will open it up for questions. Yes, you have um, like uh, college instructors who use your modules with their actual with like their students in class, or you all just like me being an instructor coming to your classes and then taking that knowledge back. I can take this and Brenda, if you want to jump in here, feel free to as well. Um, so. The model that we have is we sort of teach the Wikipedia portion of the class and the instructor teaches the content area of the class. We work with every academic discipline from anthropology to zoology and everything in between. And we, um, although we have varying academic backgrounds up here, we are not experts in every content area and we rely on the faculty who are teaching in our programs to provide that expertise. They are the subject matter experts, they know who students should be citing. They know where to help students identify content gaps in their area of expertise. They can bring that academic perspective to the guidance with the students. And what we provide is the we are experts on Wikipedia and we know how to work with your students, how to train your students, how to get your students on board. Um, now, some professors do this differently. So some professors have everything. I mean, some classes are fully online now, right? So like everything happens online. Um, some classes focus on the Wikipedia stuff outside of class and the training modules we have are all virtual. They're all on the dashboard platform and um, the students can run with it sort of without having to dedicate class time to the assignment. Um, some classes do, though, have a Wikipedia editing day or they reserve 20 minutes for questions at the end or something like that. Some faculty are able to answer those questions themselves. Um, somebody like Laurel or LT who have been involved and who have edited themselves now um, are a little bit more experienced and can answer those questions. Some professors have never edited and are re relying on us. And so that's where the sort of office hours that Brianda was talking about, and we have a ticketing system and all kinds of other ways. There's a get help button for everyone on the dashboard that they can click and be immediately contacted um, or connected with us to be able to provide that support for students. Is there anything you'd add to that, Brianda? Yeah. Um, and just, I guess, Technically, like, it's kind of hard to imagine this, right? But Leanna mentioned our dashboard, right? right? So what we provide are, like, the is it online resources, right, to move you along the project. Right. So our dashboard has created, um, like, has broken down, right, this project. We need a minimum of six weeks, right? right? So the students have time to learn, right, about Wikipedia, learn about the policies, learn about the guidelines, and actually learn how to do it, right? Because um, um, editing is not that intuitive and the online platform isn't very user friendly, you know, in terms of the interface and stuff. So it takes time, right? It takes time. And so what we've done is really broken that down so that it's not incredibly overwhelming and the students can take their time, right? As do the instructors, right? And so that's the piece that we bring, I think, to this project is like, we are the Wikipedia experts, right? Um, you come to me, ask me a question, I know it, right? I'll answer it. If I don't, I also know where to find that answer, right? And who to go to for help. Something that might take you an hour to figure out might take me like two minutes, right? And so um, that's kind of like the piece that we bring, right? And then, so we provide kind of like the skeleton, right? The infrastructure. 
and then the, there is a lot of flexibility for each instructor to really make project their own. Yeah. Both Jay and I teach information literacy and and we for you and we're at different institutions, but for years we've been talking about creating an information literacy course based on yeah, and we just never get given time to do it. So if I could say here are some plug and play things that maybe then I can get a little course release to build out of. Uh, yeah, we, we have an assignment design wizard. So our version, most people are familiar with the programs and events dashboard. And the reason we run the program and events dashboard is because we originally built the dashboard software as the course management platform for our programs. We were like, hey, it actually tracks like edit-a-thons and other things too. So we put it on a different, uh, the Wikimedia servers and opened it up to the community use. It gets way more use than our original one, but ours has a bunch of, I would say, bespoke um, features that are designed specifically for a program. And one of those is an assignment design wizard. Um, so faculty can go in and you plug in like, you know, when does your class meet? Um, do you want students to work individually or in groups? Like, do you want the training that they're going to be assigned to be graded or not graded? Which of these training resources like might be relevant for that class? And so you as a faculty member can pick them. You can mark like which days your class is on spring break or whatever, and it doesn't schedule assignments for them. So it's this dynamic tool that then builds out a assignment syllabus for you to, to integrate into your. Very cool. That's yeah, great. you can visit dashboard.wikiedu.org to, to sign up for that. Picture that there are academic or research institutions in my town that are offering the like non-credited uh, certificate style courses, which I don't know is necessarily ideal for something like this, but I'm trying to think, how do I bring in uh, a wide breadth of professors to better understand, you know, to then creating a community, first community that wants to be a part of this process to understand our own local history that much better. Um, and the design wizard sounds like that's the answer to my problem, but I figured I'd mention it anyway, just to see if you had any ideas on what that. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd love to, to talk with you more if you have a specific community of professors. We're always interested in sort of growing the program and bringing new voices in. Um, you know, I think we try to, some of the things Brianda talked about around the sort of um, intro sessions, the office hours, the things, the, the live sessions that we run for faculty who are participating in the program while they're teaching, provide an opportunity for faculty to bond and collaborate with each other. And actually some of the academic studies that Ian showed um, as well emerge from those conversations, right? So we've also seen participants in the programs connect and then go off and write a paper together uh, that they met through our program of both participating and otherwise wouldn't have connected. And so we see that kind of collaboration and community building as um, as core to what we do. And then finally, I'd also say Will's program, the scholars and scientists program that he talks about, we also have dedicated groups of 20 subject matter experts. And oftentimes those will be sponsored by a particular organization. So for example, we just ran one with the American Historical Association. And so they offered it out to all of their members who are history faculty across the United States. And so um, 20 people registered to come and learn how to edit together on related, this particular course was themed around political history. Um, so learned how to edit together and we're all contributing content then as the... So that can be absent of like, that are kind of or an academic institution that basically is just the host. Yes, yes. Chris. So the dashboard, of course, is used pretty widely throughout the Wikimedia movement, uh, sort of outside of the North American context. Would you say that there is interest either within Wikied Foundation or from potential partners in um, some of your other services or programs being offered on a wider scale than they currently are. I'm looking right behind you at Ben, who's laughing. <laughs> um, this is an ongoing discussion that we have had many times. Um, I would say I can put on my volunteer hat and say in my volunteer capacity, I'm also the chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. 
which is a user group and a, an affiliate that works to connect education program work happening all across the world. And we try to exchange, share learnings. Um, we're trying to kick off a mentorship program. Um, we're trying to sort of get um, ex experienced program leaders in this education space to collaborate sort of outside of North America. So um, I would say it's an ongoing question of exactly what that looks like. But, um, you know, I think organizationally, I can say Wiki Education remains committed to supporting education efforts globally. Uh, we are by far the largest and most established education program that's working globally, but we are not the only one. And there is some really incredible work that's being done all around the world in, I think, every continent except Antarctica. Um, and whenever there's a school for the penguins, I'm sure we'll start an education program there. Um, but there's phenomenal work being done in education by program leaders in, um, in different affiliates and at different educational institutions all over the world. Thank you. My question is sort of related to that, because I was curious um, how how often the people who participate in your programs edit um, language editions other than English Wikipedia and run into complexities with like the differences in the different communities of the different language edition, all of that fun. And Brianna, do you want to you want to take this since you were directed at students? So our biggest problem with other language Wikipedias is, while I've been a Wikipedian a long time, I only know the English Wikipedia. I don't, I mean, I have a little bit of a surface understanding of the culture in and the rules in, in some of the others, um, but then there are places, you know, there are students who want to create an article in when I, I can't even read the script. So it happens when it happens for the most part, it's sort of a, this is great translation. It's great adding content in languages other than English. It's something we really, really need. I'm, I can't really help you much. And if you do have, if you do run into problems, I can probably help you on the technical side. Send me an email, but you know, I, I don't have those sort of tools there. We do support um, at least one class for a while that, that run in French. The person running the class is an experienced Wikipedia and an experienced instructor. So they're just really using our using the dashboard and doing their own thing. But yeah, I um it's good, but my own limitations are the problem. Yeah, I mean I think I would add, you know, we have purposefully hired a staff that is full of very experienced English Wikipedia contributors and having a deep understanding of the English Wikipedia community and the English Wikipedia policies and guidelines and cultures is critically important for the success of our program. And I think we don't expect that we will be able to uh, cover that in all 333 other language Wikipedias. And so I think we do encourage translation assignments, but our recommendation is to pick an article that is available in the other language Wikipedia and translate it into English instead of the other way around, because we understand the translation rules coming into English Wikipedia and we can support you much better on English Wikipedia than you can if you are working to translate from English Wikipedia to another language. And there's plenty of opportunity for articles about important people, places, cultural um, elements from other languages still missing on Wikipedia. And so we found a lot on, missing on English Wikipedia and then we found a lot of success in, in encouraging that. Um, I just have one. Yeah. So one thing that, because, you know, in, in the US there are an awful lot of native speakers of languages other than English that are in, in higher ed. Um, but, it, but very much the, you know, the, we've had, students create articles about um, Korean pop singers in Korean or in Chinese. And, you know, the, the only help I can give them there is, this is not a reliable source. This is not a reliable source. <laughs> this is not. And, you know, a little sort of, I can look at the sources. I can't read the article. And that's, you know, that, so there you go. And, there you've got the weakness of any article about pop culture 
has a tendency to be based on sources that aren't reliable because that's where most of the coverage is. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, go get lunch.